The doctor said Wilma Rudolph would never be able to walk, but that never stopped her. She overcame her disabilities through physical therapy and hard work. She went on to become a gifted runner. She became the first American woman to win three gold medals in track and field events at the Olympics, and later worked as a teacher and track coach. Wilma Rudolph was born June 23, 1940, in Bethlehem, Tennessee, the 20th of 22 children. She was born with polio and suffered from serious amounts of pneumonia and scarlet fever as a young child. All these illnesses contributed to a bad leg that some said would prevent her from ever walking. But Wilma had a loving family who made sure she got the medical attention she needed. She wore a leg brace from the time she was five until she was 11 years old. Then one Sunday, she removed it and walked down the aisle of her church. When Wilma gained the ability to walk, she started attending school. In 1947, the schools of the southern states were segregated. Black students and white students had to attend separate schools, even though blacks had to pay the same taxes as whites. The schools for black students were usually poorly funded, so they were less likely to have adequate books, teachers, classrooms, or equipment. In the 1960s, Wilma Rudolph was considered the fastest woman in the world and competed in two Olympic Games. In the 1960 Summer Olympics, which took place in Rome, she became the first American woman to win three gold medals in track and field during a single Olympic game. The Italians nicknamed her La Gazella Nera, the Black Giselle. To the French, she was La Pearl Noire, the Black Pearl. Throughout her career, Wilma won many awards. In 1961, Rudolph won the James E. Sullivan Award, an award for the top amateur athlete in the United States, and visited President John F. Kennedy. She was voted into the National Black Sports and Entertainment Hall of Fame in 1973 and the National Track and Field Hall of Fame in 1974. Also, she was enlisted into the United States Olympic Hall of Fame in 1983 and inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1994. After retiring from competition, she shared her remarkable story with the world in 1977 with her autobiography, Wilma. Her book was later turned into a TV film. Also, her heroic tale was turned into a picture book called Wilma Unlimited. On Saturday, November 12, 1994, Wilma died at the age of 54 in her home in Nashville, Tennessee. She had been in and out of hospitals for several months after she was diagnosed with brain cancer. At the time of her death, she had four children, eight grandchildren, and many nieces and nephews. Thousands of mourners filled the Tennessee State University's Keene Hall on November 17, 1994, for the memorial service in her honor. Across Tennessee, the state flag flew at half-mast. No doubt about it, Wilma Rudolph managed to create a beautiful life for herself. She overcame one obstacle after another, choosing to listen not to the doubters, but to the voices of hope and inspiration instead. Her childhood illnesses gave her strength and determination. Living under segregation, she learned to carry herself with quiet dignity, even in the face of ignorance.